Mr. Clive Lloyd, members of the press. Well, you have heard quite a lot. So far, the minister has given you an, a comprehensive outline of what has transpired so far and what is intended by the establishment of the IMC. Mr. Clive Lloyd um, has also alluded to the objectives of the IMC and because it's important that these things be said because of the volume of misinformation that is being peddled. My role is quite simple. As you know, this whole issue of the IMC came about as a result of uh, a court ruling. Now, it is public knowledge that we have had a series of litigation going back over the last two years touching and concerning the administration of cricket in Guyana. And for various reasons, none of these matters really produced any decisive outcome. They were left in the court system for one reason or another, and we never had a definitive ruling emanating from the court until August of 2011, when the Honorable Chief Justice, in a matter filed by Angela Hanif, against, in her capacity as Secretary of the Barbies Cricket Board, against Ramzi Ali in his capacity as a purported president of the Guyana Cricket Board, Faisal Bakas in his capacity as a purported vice president of the Guyana Cricket Board, our friend Mentor, etc., and different other persons in different capacities purporting to represent the Guyana Cricket Board. This was an action which the Chief Justice took the opportunity for the first time to examine the entire structure which administers cricket in Guyana. And when the examination was done, the Chief Justice in his examination examined, perused the constitution of the Guyana Cricket Board and its constituent membership. And the constituent members of the Guyana Cricket Board are the Demerara Cricket Board, the Barbies Cricket Board, and the Essequibo Cricket Board. Members of the Guyana Cricket Board are, are not the persons who purport to hold office for the Guyana Cricket Board. And that's a major misconception. The Guyana Cricket Board membership are three boards, or purports to be boards. The Barbies Cricket Board, the Essequibo Cricket Board, and the Demerara Cricket Board. The Guyana Cricket Board, as the Chief Justice pointed out, has no legal personality. It's an unincorporated body. It can't own property. It can't sue. It can be sued. It can be held accountable for its conduct and for the administration of cricket in Guyana. That is the nebulous nature of this entity calling itself Guyana Cricket Board. Now when you look at the Guyana Cricket Board and you look at its membership, you are confronted with a similar dilemma. The membership, again, is not comprised of persons. You see, you can have an unincorporated body, but this unincorporated body can have, as its members, persons that are recognized by law. Like how the IMC, which is an unincorporated, unregistered body, has a, as its member Clyde Lloyd. So you can hold Clyde Lloyd responsible for an action or an omission committed by the IMC. In the Guyana Cricket Board, you can hold no one liable because its members are the Guyana Cricket Board, the Demerara Cricket Board, the Barbies Cricket Board, and the Essequibo Cricket Board. Now, who are the who is the Guyana who is the Barbies Cricket Board? Yeah. Who is the Demerara Cricket Board? Is that a person? Is that a human being? Is that a company? And then when you look at the Demerara Cricket Board, it, it be, the same position legally exists. The Demerara Cricket Board, for example, and this exists in all three of the county boards, consists of the Georgetown Cricket Association, 
the East, Bo East Coast Cricket Board, the East Bank Cricket Board, and the West Demerara Cricket Association. Now, who are the, who is the East Coast Cricket Board? Who is that person? Who is the Georgetown Cricket Association? Who is that human being or who is that body recognized by law that we can hold accountable? So you have a whole superstructure that is unrecognized by law, that does not exist, that do not exist in law, that you can't hold accountable for anything, that can't be sued, that can't own property, that can't attract liability. So who do you hold responsible for the state of administration of cricket in Guyana? And that is the dilemma that the Chief Justice identified in his ruling. For example, how are people elected to these bodies when these bodies don't exist? And the Chief Justice pointed that out. He says the court can give no recognition to the Guyana Cricket Board, not only as a legal body, but also it cannot give recognition to the election of office bearers within that association. The position would have been different if the membership of the GCB had comprised of persons. But since the GCB is also comprised of unincorporated persons, how can these people run for elections? How can you have the Amarara Cricket Board running for an election? The Amarara Cricket Board is not a person known to law. It's not a person, it's not a human being, it's not something tangible that you can touch, feel. It's not a company that can be represented by someone. So that is the dilemma which the judgment of the Chief Justice identified. And in correcting that, that the dilemma, the Honorable Chief Justice pointed to the existence Firstly, the Chief Justice recognized sports, um, cricket, sorry, as an important national sport in Guyana. He recognized cricket as an important part of our heritage, an important part of the Guyanese people, and an important economic unit that we earn money from as a country and as a people and as cricketers, because he recognized here that cricketers for example, Mr. Clive Lloyd has achieved international recognition and earns a good living. I understand he didn't get it 250 US, but that, that aside, has earned a good living off of cricket. And here it is, the lives and livelihood of people are put in jeopardy because of the fact that there is no administrative structure that one can hold accountable and that and, and this administrative structure is being run by people and these persons are accountable to no one and there is no mechanism to hold them accountable so what do you do in this situation the, the chief justice speaking as the judicial arm of the government of the state of Guyana recommended to the chief to the executive the chief justice said look cricket is important and you have a personnel in the hierarchy of the executive who holds responsibility for the administration of sport in Guyana, of which cricket is one. And that personnel is the Minister of Sport. I am, it is not the place, the Chief Justice recognizes in his judgment, that it is not the place for the judiciary to adumbrate policy. But he says that he does not feel that the judiciary is powerless to recommend to the other branch of the government being the executive and the parliament in whose power the responsibility lies and the ability lies to correct this dilemma to correct it and that is what the chief justice did he recommended to the minister of sport he said use your executive will step into this situation and take such measures as you deem necessary to remedy what obviously is a flagrantly unfortunate state of administrative affairs in the area of cricket. The direct, the exact words of the Chief Justice is, now let me quote, in the present state of affairs, while a legislative structure, and the Chief Justice is now speaking to Parliament, while a legislative structure 
for the administration of cricket is desirable, there may be immediate need for the minister responsible for sports to impose his executive will in the national interest until such time as Parliament can provide a more permanent structure. The minister can take immediate interim remedial action while the legislature seeks to provide a more permanent solution. So the minister in the exercise of his executive will has taken a decision to establish an interim management committee to take to assume the administration of cricket in Guyana and to sort out this administrative and legal dilemma in which the administration of cricket finds itself in. We have been careful, the minister has been very careful in the manner in which he has constituted me the membership of the IMC because we are careful that we would have been accused of political intervention. And that is why the minister chose in the exercise of his deliberate judgment personnel of the quality and caliber and international standing like Mr. Clive Lloyd, Mr. Edward Laku, and people who I cannot see how people can label them uh, persons with a political agenda. It was carefully orchestrated that way to prevent and to preclude that type of insinuation being made. And we ensure also that not only are, would the, the IMC be staffed with persons who we consider to be technocratic personnel with the technical expertise that is necessary to revamp the administration of cricket, but also that we gave an opportunity to the persons who are actually involved in the administration of cricket in Guyana an opportunity to serve on this um, body. And that is why we included representatives from all the county boards and those who held office at the Guyana Cricket Board prior to its disillusion by the minister. So we have an amalgamation and a combination of people that are technically sound and that know cricket administration and have been involved in cricket administration on the ground in Guyana in the recent past. And that is the type of configuration that we sought to establish because our primary and singular interest is to bring our cricket back from the depths to which it has fallen and to put it at a level that cricket can benefit and our people can benefit as a whole because no one is benefiting right now from the, from the, the, the state at which cricket is in. Now, the court matters have not been concluded despite what I consider to be a definitive pronouncement from the court by the Chief Justice, the court con proceedings continue to be filed by those who um, were part of the Guyana Cricket Board. They filed another proceedings through Mr. Chetram Singh and a gentleman by the name of Lionel Jaikaran in which these persons are claiming to be trustees of the Guyana Cricket Board and they sought to institute proceedings seeking to quash the minister's decision to set, to set up the IMC. That proceedings, those proceedings were heard again by Chief Justice Chang who reiterate, reiterated his position in his judgment and simply said that if you don't have, if I can't recognize the board, this entity calling itself a board, then how can I recognize those who pretend to be trustees? of that which doesn't exist. So as a result, that action was dismissed. And then they didn't, those who were filing leave it like that, they appealed that decision. That appeal was heard by two judges, Mr. Justice Bothell Drakes and Mr. Justice Ramlal, sitting in the full court. And I have the judges' handwritten judgments. It is being typed right now. So 
Um, I will give you a copy of this, and when it is typed, of course, it will be made available. But this is what the judges say. Uh, this is the, in the language of Justice Ram Lal. I take the liberty to say that the Guyana Cricket Board is not the lawful and proper administrative administrators of cricket in the state of Guyana. The GCB cannot speak for nor has any lawful authority to speak for the state of Guyana. Only the executive by itself or through parliament can so do. The GCB and then go, goes on to say something else. But the point is that we have a, a pronouncement now from an appellate court. So it's not only Chief Justice Chang who has said what he has said. We have two judges now sitting in a higher court who have pronounced in a similar fashion. Yet we are faced with a position where the West Indies Cricket Board is telling us that no matter what your court decisions say, no matter what your judges say, we are telling you that we will only recognize this entity called the Guyana Cricket Board. And if you don't accept that, irrespective of what your courts say, well then we will ban you and ban Guyana from playing cricket. That is the unreasonable position advanced by the West Indies Cricket Board to which we could not have agreed at the interaction that we had under the auspices of the CARICOM Secretary General. That is where the, the, the negotiations fell down because they are telling us as a condition precedent to anything else, we must recognize the Guyana Cricket Board we must recognize those who are administering the affairs of the Guyana Cricket Board and we must turn a blind eye to all the pronouncements made by our courts and we must turn a blind eye to all the allegations which have been made to, against these people. We pointed out to the members of the West Indies Cricket Board the nature of the allegations and the number of allegations and the, the seriousness of the allegations which have been leveled against these persons who are purporting to hold themselves out to be members of the Guyana Cricket Board. They include financial irregularity, they include fraud, they include electoral irregularity, they include um, visa racketeering. These are serious criminal offenses. And I pointed it out to the West Indies Cricket Board that these are the people that you are asking us to accept as part of the administrative structure of cricket in Guyana. And as a governing body, one would expect that these are your representatives in Guyana. And you would at, at least be a little concerned that these people are embroiled in this type of controversy. And one would expect that you would be most anxious as a parent body to have these matters um, investigated in the quickest manner and to insulate these people away from the investigation so that the investigation would have integrity and it would have impartiality and at the end of the day if if your officers and those who you claim are your representatives are innocent well then they would be vindicated their innocence would be vindicated by the um, by the, the investigations but the West Indies Cricket Board remains intransigent in their position that they are not going to budge from their position that they will only recognize these persons as persons who administer cricket in Guyana and if we as a country if we as a government is if the Minister of Sport doesn't accept that well, and, and, and if our court doesn't accept these people well then there's a matter for us and that they will not part, they will not um, allow Guyana to be part of the cricketing fraternity of the West Indies to hold masses and that is where the talks break down and the last issue that I would like to deal with quickly is the position of the IMC now the IMC has a position that deals with governmental interference in the administration of cricket I ICC sorry the ICC the ICC has a position that deals with the question of governmental interference and we are cognizant of that position and we have read the rules regarding that position. Incidentally, 
Mr. Clive Lloyd is the chairman of the cricket subcommittee of the IMC, ICC, uh, ICC. and he is cricket the chairman. Committee. Cricket committee. He's a cricket committee. He's the chairman of the cricket committee of the ICC. And so we are aware of the restrictions. But this is what it says, and I have a document here from the ICC outlining their position on this matter. A government would not be prevented from providing financial assistance to a member. Sorry, not there. A sec, yes. Naturally, a government or any office thereof would also not be prevented from investigating the affairs of a member board, Diana is a member board, in order to ascertain whether any criminal offense has been committed, well that is the allegation, including fraud, their reliction of director's duty, including fiduciary duty, or contravention of any relevant legislation. Similarly, there may be circumstances where a government or any ministry thereof rightfully seeks to intervene in the event that a minister that a member board is dysfunctional. The ICC Governance Review Committee believes that this is a question of accountability and not interference. So this is the ICC position. This is a document signed by a person named David Becker, head of legal and company secretary. ICC. So that is their position. And my interpretation of that document, that part of the document that I just read, allows, in fact encourages, the type of initiative and the type of intervention made in Guyana. So I think that it is unfortunate that it is believed that what the government is seeking to do and what the IMC is seeking to do is interference. It is not that. It is a question of accountability, as the ICC points out. And that is all that we are trying to do, to restructure the system, to make it accountable, to make it lawful, and to make it responsible. Imagine an organization having two constitutions, and they invoke the constitution that has a provision convenient to their particular cause that they are advocating on a particular occasion. So they are, I don't, I, this is unbelievable that an organization administering an important thing like a country's sports, having two constitutions in force and using the constitution that is most favorable to them when they are dealing with a particular issue and disregarding that constitution that is against them in other words, they have two documents that they are using to their convenience, at their own whim and fancy. Now, that is, that is horrible <laughs> administration, to say the least. <laughs> so, members of the media, you are free, as the Minister said, as Mr. Lloyd said, to ask any questions. I hope that you have, had, you have enough. I mean, I know I have spoken at length. The Minister spoke at length. Uh, Mr. Lloyd spoke at length on the various matters that come under our respective um, you know, um, matters that we want to, to advise you and assist you on. And I hope now that we can have clarity in the press and all these issues that are flying around, we can put them to rest. Imagine there is a statement that purports to emanate from two political parties, a joint opposition statement. And um, the minister spoke to one political party and I spoke to the other. And both of these political parties say that they have not issued that statement. That is the type of irresponsibility and, and malice that is going on in relation to this cricket matter. Two major political parties in this country are now being caught by those who are peddling this agenda. So that is, the, that, that is why we have summoned this meeting so that you have access to us and we have an opportunity to give you a full blast, a full mouthful of what the position is now so that we won't have the position of misrepresentation and lack of information in the future. Thank you.